The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, which was the third Sunday after the Epiphany. And refer to that again, that's the worship of the wise men of the infant Jesus. But we're looking at Isaiah chapter 61, the beginning of that reading, just verses 1 to 3 today, where Jesus prophetically spoke and said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. My dear friends in Christ, as we said yesterday, what an amazing turnaround we have in Jesus. What an amazing turnaround we have in Jesus. Jesus spoke these words prophetically and that was about 700 years before he was born before he entered into our world. The prophet Isaiah was inspired to put these words down for our Savior. That was 700 years before Christ was born, 100 years before the Jews were carried off into the Babylonian captivity. The Jews had been warned about that. They had been told that because of their unfaithfulness to God, their worshiping of idols, this captivity was coming. And that had to be a downer note, especially for those people who were believing children of God. There was a small group of those still in the land that believed in the promises of God. And this reading really is spoken especially to those few faithful Jews who still remained in the land because they were being told there were going to be some trying times ahead, especially because of that captivity. But there would be relief. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from, from darkness for the prisoners, to comfort all who mourn. Now what Jesus was talking about is that, yes, the Jews would be freed from their captivity. They would return to Palestine. They would rebuild the temple. But more importantly, what he was talking about here is how Jesus gives us a relief from a captivity that enslaves all people, and that's the captivity of sin. All of us were conceived and born in sin. We were enslaved to Satan and sin. But God sent Jesus to preach the good news to us, as he says here to preach that good news to us who were spiritually poor. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. But he preaches the good news to us. And through that good news, through the Holy Spirit working through the word, well, right now, instead of being spiritually poor, now, by God's grace, we're spiritually rich. We have God's grace and love. We have the forgiveness of sins. We have the certain hope of eternal life. We certainly are spiritually rich. And what that means is that we who, oh, were troubled by our sins, who did have to fear God's wrath and anger against sin, we can rejoice because Christ has come and through faith we're 
We're forgiven, we're heirs of him, heaven. And what an amazing turnaround we have in Jesus. Well, he says, the Lord has sent me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. The year of the Lord's favor is not talking about a specific year. It's actually talking about an endless period of time and it's talking about our eternal life in heaven. But it's also referring to the present time. Well, for us, for those believers back then, that present time, that present time uh, for us as believers in Jesus because what we're doing right now is yes, we're still living in a sinful world, but we're enjoying Jesus' favor, the Lord's favor right now. We have his grace and love. And then the day of vengeance that he talks about here, that's referring to judgment day and the, e and the verdict of eternal punishment that those who have rejected Jesus, those who have lived in unbelief, they'll face that day of vengeance, that judgment day when they will be eternally sentenced to, to hell forever as long as they continue in their, in their unbelief. But now what that's also referring to is, like I said, it's also referring to the present time for the person who rejects Jesus because if he rejects Jesus, if he is an unbeliever, that means that he doesn't have Christ's grace and love right now. He has rejected those things. He is living in that day of vengeance. But now fortunately what we can recognize is that, well, when Jesus came, well, we can rejoice in his favor. There are those who, those who have to face his wrath, but Jesus came to preach both heaven and hell, both gospel and law. He preached the law to show us our sin, to show us how desperately we need his help, and then he preaches the gospel to show us that the help that God got graciously gave us when he sent his son to live and to die for us and to pay for our sins. That help from God means everything. And to just say it's help, that sounds like such an understatement. He did everything for us. We were dead in our transgressions and sins. We have fallen far short of the glory of God. We deserve the wages of sin, which is death, eternal death, eternal separation from God. We could only be afraid of God because of our sin, because we've broken God's law. But, but Christ changed all of that. He said, the Lord has sent me to provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Well, the fact is, is that we're still sinners and we always will be sinners this side of heaven. But because of Christ, our mourning for our sins. It's, it's changed into rejoicing. It's changed into rejoicing in Christ's forgiveness for us. Well, Jesus then says about us believers, they will be called oaks of righteousness or sinlessness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Oh, and what We've talked about that amazing turnaround he works in us, and now he's talking about what amazing strength we have in Jesus. We, because Jesus is working in us, we're Christian soldiers who can fight the good fight of faith. We're able to stand up for Jesus, and that's because of the amazing strength we have in Jesus. And 
the picture there, we're like that strong oak tree, as, as Jesus says. And, well, what does that mean? It means, like as Paul says, he says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And perhaps we're not really all that inclined to think of ourselves as strong spiritual oaks like Jesus describes us here. And on Sunday when I referred to this, I said sometimes we maybe feel a little bit more like those weak saplings, those new trees that maybe even got run over by a lawnmower. That's how sometimes we may feel. But with Christ and his strength, we're not those weak saplings. We're mighty oaks that cannot be toppled. We can, with our Savior, in his strength, we can fight the good fight of faith. We can be Christ's witnesses. And what amazing strength we have in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, help us to always treasure what an amazing turnaround you have accomplished in our lives. We once were lost, but now have been found. We were blind, but now we see. Now what amazing strength we have in Jesus. We can, with Jesus, fight the good fight of faith. We can share Jesus with the people around us. Thank you for sending us Jesus to live and die for us, pay for all our sins, and for sending the Holy Spirit working through the word of God so that we believe in what Jesus has done to turn around our lives. Help us now to use the strength you give us to fight the good fight of faith and to do everything we can to share Jesus with the world. We pray in his name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.